Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. Thank you for tuning in again. Uh, two weeks. We got two weeks to Election Day. How the heck does that happen? I don't know, but I do know it's in November because last week I flubbed September, October, but it's But that's November. okay because we had no audio on <laughs> Facebook Live. So we are doing this also on Facebook Live, which is never as good quality as here what we get here from Manchester Public Television, but... It's kind of fun, and I just heard a yay from Brandon out there. <laughs> but it is true. We get a much better quality on the, on Manchester Public Television than we do on Facebook. We're not all like at an angle and big head and whatnot. Um, last week, I apologize. We obviously mastered video, One half. but not audio, because apparently there's a button that I have to push to get audio because I'm super secret and have all the cameras and mics shut off and everything. But anyways, I think now, today, we're live with audio. Um, joining us is Brittany LeClaire Ping, who is a candidate for school committee in Ward 11. Yes. How's that going? It's going really good, actually. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I had planned to run, so I knew what I was getting yeah. into. Yeah. It wasn't just a last minute decision, which felt pretty good. Yep. It's but always good to have when you're expecting to do it. Yes, yes. Uh, so it's been really great talking talking to people who are running throughout the city yep. and kind of learning from them, um, kind of leaning on people who've been on the school committee yep. for a few uh, terms. Uh, Ross Terrio, Lisa Freeman have really been great Good. Awesome. Uh, shoulders to lean on. Well, and I, you know, I, I always feel like I'm, you know, I have a hard time. I'm biased because, you know, I run the Republicans. <laughs> We won't go down that road, but um, you run the Republicans. I run them. <laughs> I run those Republicans ragged, but I just, I, I you know, I run she the Republicans committee. Do fun walks. Um, yeah, I don't know if she runs. I don't us, know if I actually us. run them. Um, but I, so I'm biased in that regard. Um, but I'm also, I also try to be somewhat objective and think about like, what's this look like from a different perspective other than what, what I might see. And I don't know the name of your opponent at all. Well, let's not say it on air. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm just saying, I actually literally always have to go and look it up, and I have no idea who this person is other than what I actually had to go find. Um, I drive, I live, you know, one ward away from you, yeah. and I, um, in fairness, drive around, and uh, Norm Gamash has no signs, and Gl Russ Ouellette has some signs, and I'm sure this week Brittany Ping will have a boatload. Yeah, the state flower is going to bloom. Yeah. Uh, Pretty two purple. weeks to the election, it's going to get a little purple out there. Yeah. So, yeah, oh, not, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so your background a little bit, right? You come from an HR background? Yeah, so I got my uh, undergraduate degree at Ball State University in Muncie, Indiana. Um, it's a business administration with a concentration in human resources mm -hmm. and organizational communications. So that's so literally... You can, so you can hire and fire people and talk and be organized when I you're doing I solve it all. people's problems where they work. That that's was awesome. basically what that degree, the intent of that degree was. Um, uh, and then I got right into the HR field. I worked at machine shops in Indianapolis uh, before my husband and I moved here to New Hampshire. Um, I've worked for Fortune, the largest company headquartered in New Hampshire, if you're aware of that, where that is in Merrimack, New Hampshire. I worked <laughs> for them for four years. Um, I s left that job to get like the human resources job while I was finishing my graduate degree. So I have an MBA from SNU with a focus in human resource management as well. Um, and by the time I had accepted the job, like the HR job, like this is going to be my career. I'm huge. I'm a huge employment law compliance nerd. Like let it's the nerdiest <laughs> thing in the whole world. I love it. <laughs> the final rule from the, <laughs> there's some really exciting stuff that's happening in January, friends. It's really cool. Uh, let's talk about it. The Fair Labor Standards Act. Exciting. I love it. Um, so when I made that big transition and I'm working 60, 70 hours a week and I'm commuting my kids to the seacoast for daycare and my husband is this entrepreneur. How, how old are your kids? I, uh, they are four and a half and three. So Emmerich is my son. He's four and a half. My daughter, Otelia, just turned three. Oh, so. And they're so cute. They are. They are really cute. <laughs> they are cute. Um, so Emmerich and Otelia, right, they were commuting. And so they're spending 60 plus hours outside of the mm. home. And I looked at my husband and I'm like, we, we had a parenting plan. Like when right. we decided to How have How did kids, we end up here? Like you're working more than I am. Like money doesn't mean anything to me. Like why are we doing this? Why mm. are we chasing this? I have one semester left in my graduate degree. Like, let me help you transition this business. I'll help you hire the right people. And if we don't work out together, working together, I'll just bow out and go. And that was two and a half years ago. Uh, I became a partner six months later in the business. And uh, we are 15 employees today. He started today. Yeah. Wow. So I just hit that New Hampshire safety loss. <laughs> uh, uh, He's like, yeah, yeah, I can nerd out. I can nerd out to a whole new level. 
Um, and uh, and six, you know, 15 employees and growing. Um, and I'm just using my experience, not only at my healthy people where they work, now I help people where they live. So basically problems. you are a mom, you're a small business owner. Yeah. You uh, have expertise and stuff. You can clearly make a spreadsheet. Yes. <laughs> yes. You are electable, young I lady. Am, I are. <laughs> it was terrifying to realize I have the qualifications yes, that the board doesn't have right, right now. Well, and I, I, Especially, I think that's very legit because I do think sometimes the school board, we keep calling them school board, which is just easier. They they just sometimes don't seem to know what the hell they're doing. And that's not a, meant to be negative towards any individual on that board. It just doesn't seem like the knowledge that they need to do the task at hand isn't always there. So it's really funny because we did a budget training with Rich Gerard yeah. and it was fantastic. It, it really was. And it opened my eyes. I mean, I'm I've always been really interested in the state level of mm. the politics side of things. Um, this really m micro level of government, the city government, I didn't have a yeah. big handle on it. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it was really cool to dig into yes. the numbers with Rich and him, you know, and it wasn't spun, but he was just like, this is what this is, and this is right. where this goes, and this is what this means. And it was like, and I feel and he, like Rich really brought a value did. to things because, you know, he, I think he was an outsider from everyone's perspective, you know, He's so always, I've like read his blogs and yeah. stuff and I just feel like I'm just getting information. I don't actually even feel like he's picking a side. Mm -hmm. He's He'll just tell you like, his opinion on the information, oh, sure. but yes, he yeah. presents a lot of facts he's, and it, a lot of historical knowledge on where that came from. And I, in the bigger school uh, committee election, um, I am hoping, besides obviously hoping that you get elected in two weeks, I really do hope that John DiPietro makes it this yes. time because he is that data guy who has it's just a, all that data, the same type of stuff that we're hyper providing. focused, and we're losing Rich. Super. Yeah. Right, we're and, losing and Rich. And actually, running. I've got, like, I printed out all these spreadsheets and stuff today, and um, most of this came from data that John DePietro's collected and then I kind of, you know, parse right. over to what I need. And and so what we do want, right, you want that mix on the board where you have people who bring different yep. skill sets. Yes. And I think it is time for some fresh yep. new blood, right? I, I mean, it is mostly new people running. There's, there's a lot of new people, I there think. There is. And the city, so the city side, this is kind of what kind of hit me where I was like, whoa, what I bring to the table is unique and needed. Because the city has a human resources committee but the school committee doesn't have that. And you're we're supporting Dr. Goldhart who in negotiations right, so with, that he can run right what he, he can be successful. And he's yep. already said he wants to be this long term yep. superintendent, which is what we need. It's yeah, absolutely right. what we have to support because we want long term teachers, right. we want long term principals, we want long term professional staff, right. we want long term But if they're not happy, they're right. not gonna stay. And if you cannot support Dr. Goldhart and what he needs to do by to giving him them. a long term staff of employees, then we can't do anything. Right. So where is the HR experience on the board? And you have a great negotiations committee, don't get me wrong, they've been working hard at it for a long period of time, but we know it's gonna look different. Yep, yeah, right. And who's gonna come to the table and have to learn everything about yeah. what's uh, happening yeah. from the beginning. With no background. With no background. Brittany is. <laughs> She'll have the background. She will know it all. <laughs> I can't I can't say that I'm gonna walk in and make things no, make but sense. At least day you're one. A step ahead that but I have 10 years of foundational experience. I have two degrees of foundational knowledge. Right. To Well, that's like uh, Jimmy LaHue down in Ward 8. He's on the school committee. And his big pitch is always about um, the trades and yeah. making sure that we're pushing kids into the trades. But he works for ProCon. So, like, he has that experience. Absolutely. He's like, no, no, no. We need people in the trades. He's not just saying that because, you know, some poll said this is what people want to hear about. And the scariest, the scariest thing getting deep down into this micro level of how the city government works is they're like these kindergartners. How do we prepare them from work? And I have a, I have a four and a half year old. And I'm like, oh, you want to yeah. prepare my a four and a half year old? Well, never mind. Work? I had to tell the people who think that 12 years from when your kids in kindergarten, the needs are going to be different than what they are now. Right. How many but times do you see that? Well, Everybody goes into physical therapy. Then we don't have any jobs for physical therapists. Right. I was told to be an engineer. I went to school for chemical no, engineering and chemistry when I was 17 years old. <laughs> I don't have like an engineering I, I mean, to some extent, it's also one. like when we think about the schooling model, it's like, well, we've had this model for, you know, like a hundred plus years. Maybe it's time to sort of figure it out and to, to not be. I mean, what we know from a scientific perspective is that four-year-old, that six 
six-year-old, even, you know, they need to play. To they need yeah. to play. They need imagination corners. They need to, I mean, I hate to say it in these terms, but they need to be free, right? My, my mother-in-law who passed a couple of years ago, but she had a doctorate in early child development. And, you know, I always say the proof is in the pudding. So you kind of look, you know, do people practice what they preach? And then, uh, you know, so I was like, well, how did her kids turn out, right? right. And her kids are awesome. And not right. only because I'm married to one of them, but, you he know. paid you to say that, didn't he? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been walking around the house going, remember, I'm a notable Garrick. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> Which is unrelated to anything. That was a slow take on mine. I'm like, oh yeah, I read that. It was something that happened. Yeah. I got a wiki page, so I was like very proud of that. But anyway, um, it's really like the science is there. So I think there's this disconnect where because of the way schools work, right? You kind of you're taking everyone, and then it's like, well, now we got a management problem, so we got to like put things and make rules. And I mean, I'm seeing things on social media where some kid got like arrested for making a finger gun yeah, yeah this and is being not charged dangerous. with right. a crime and but, i was like wow but to, you know to tie to tie it into the city level right that research you know victoria sullivan's the one that got the play-based kindergarten passed in our schools at a state level right and so no, and we do right. and we did implement that if i'm not wrong i believe the west side mm. kindergartens are play-based yes i think all of them are i th I know they had that i'm just i'm much more familiar right. right because i'm moving people into my i'm very familiar right. with parker varney and right. gossip park yep because and, um, and northwest um on the on the subject of education while we're talking about you talk about play base and all the you know different ways of uh, kids being educated and whatnot I was really disappointed this week to see that gel car um, rejected education edu uh, learn everywhere learn program everywhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, education commissioner so it was from Adam Blue had this, uh, this learn every anywhere thing which only makes sense so we can't have that um, basically to say that you know if you're if a student is learning this skill set someplace other than the brick and mortar traditional school shouldn't they get credit for it which is well, what and also those programs would be accredited by the doe yes. so it wasn't like you know it wasn't really because like really, you know. i was sort of like oh that'd be cool i would teach like art painting portrait classes or something which i have like zero skills other than like an interest in <laughs> and then i went to look and i was like oh, oh yeah. no like you, you really have to, really have to jump to... through some right. hoops and stuff so the the reason, so I, I'm a huge NPR listener. I don't know if you guys know this about I, we me. Listen I'm, NPR a, too. I'm a nerd. It's what's blasting in my car. Um, so what I heard about when they were bringing this to commission, right, is it's it's not necessarily to create new ones. Like you were saying, it's super hard to create something that could be accredited by the state. Right. But it's like um, they did an example of uh, BAE in mm -hmm. Nashua, yeah, yeah. right? And there was 18 students there. I'm off the top yeah. of my head numbers so there right. someone's going to cite me wrong but it's fine um and six of those students those high school students that went through the program were part of merrimack high school i'm just pretending right and they got accreditation yeah. from their school it was hard to, to get the credit right but the other schools and it was either because the students didn't understand there wasn't an administrator in the school yeah. to, to properly to... line those up and get it accredited by the state so it's basically the state just saying hey this rate this bae program could be anybody it's already done right. your administrator doesn't have to figure it out your student doesn't right. have to figure it out you don't have to figure it out with the company to figure out yeah. if they can get you the right information it's removing the red tape yeah. for programs that are already there that are right. being used through high schools and hopefully middle schools across the state and just removing that red tape and saying hey you know student at memorial that wants to do engineering you know, your first robotics and you're spending 12 hours right. a week on first robotics. You get guess credit. What? You're already credited. You don't have to jump through red, right. red tape. So basically it was a, a a genuine win for students and for, for Our choice. Our understaffed schools. Like, kind of, yeah, yeah, administrators. Exactly, well, right? and, and this does. And so the question does beg to be asked on a 10 person committee, right? Like so, it was six Democrats and four Republicans, yep. and the vote, vote was, was six, six to four. four. And it's hard not to say, "Look, they're politicizing things that should not be politicized." Mm -hmm. That 
are hurting our children. Yeah. Like, I agree. I, and for what? So if you're a frustrated teacher or more likely the union folks, right, where it's all about, no, we just have to concentrate this power in our hands. And I'm like, look, guys, there's got to be a better way yeah. because, you know what, we, we all care about the children yeah. and what they're learning because they're our future. And so let's play nice, please. And so the great part about what you're saying, too, the great part about New Hampshire is that we do have super local control over our schools, right? We don't have... The, We're not, we don't have a top-down. Right, which is very... Which is, is good. Right? There's a lot less strings, right? There's a lot less Pinocchio strings. Right, because kids in Allentown might not need the same thing that kids in Claremont need. Absolutely. And so I can understand the fear, right, that I don't understand why the fear of those six is big government controlling the children... That seems weird. Uh, <laughs> so there's that. But so I can understand that from one perspective, but then we do have the checks and balances, right? And and what makes it so that a child at Memorial is different than a child at Merrimack going to the same right. opportunity to learn outside of the classroom. And it just actually And we oh. should that should be what the state does. Absolutely. The state I, should remove those barriers, those administrative nasty red tape barriers. We shouldn't be creating more, more red tape for students to be able to because, learn. Because, I mean, and I know you said you're like a rules nerd, so good I for you. I, I'm the opposite. I mean, I am a lawyer, so I get that, you know, we need those it's things. It's funny but that it's the like, attorney amongst the three but, of us is like, I'm not really into how to Well, the thing is just, no, it's, just it's, it's too hard to keep everything yes. straight when there are too many rules, right? right. Like, it's that, that sort of, it's not even a joke, but there's a yeah. professor from Boston, I think it was BU or Harvard or somewhere, who was like, well, we all, you know, commit three felonies a yeah. day because there are so many rules. Yeah. And I always think about, like, you you run a business, you've been in organizations, I've been in organizations, and, you know, let's say an organization's been around for 20 years, and you come in halfway through, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're like, ooh, there's already so much legacy, I should come and do my own thing because, you know, and then you're like, even in a 20-year thing, generally no one really has any idea who's doing what no. where the money's going what's no. going on so now let's extrapolate that like to, to a government, government right and it's just like can you imagine like i've often said i just want to see one flow chart that just shows me this is where even just let's say for city education money this is where it comes in this is where it's going or for the homeless problem here are the programs here's the nonprofits we're working with here's this but it doesn't seem like it's, anyone can no, answer these questions no. for us, which makes me think there's well, a lot of inefficiency it's, it's in It's just so, it's layer upon layer upon layer. I mean, this isn't specific to that, but it's tied to that. We're electing the school charter commission. Um, that alone, I, I, am, I just don't have time in the next two weeks to really th read it more. It was the worst written bill I think I've ever read in my life. Pat Long should be ashamed of himself. And he was the only person who sponsored that. There were no co-sponsors on this bill. No, no one really wanted this. No. This isn't how something it, that came from the people. This is something that came from the power. On voice votes is beyond me. Um, well, the, who made the comment that they just thought, you know, this rest of the, t the rest of the state's just letting us figure it out? Well, that's they, great. What skin do they have in the game? Yeah. And now well, I mean, we get it's fine to when you figure sit, it out. When you sit up there as a state rep and there's enabling legislation that allows a town allows a town to do something, it's one thing. When you pass a piece of legislation that mandates a town that Manchester it. must Lust. do this on this particular day, shame on Pat Long for putting this in. Yeah. This is this is there I mean, is no way that this is just an organic hey, I had this idea, I'd like to run with it. And, there is an agenda behind this. Just and to, to we'll remind our, to our viewers it. back home and on Facebook, I mean, basically, as far as we can figure out, no one really knows what this charter nope. commission is nope. supposed to be doing, which already makes it, like, super fishy. Yeah. <laughs> but then, I mean, the only thing that we can think is because New Hampshire, uh, because Manchester has the tax cap and the yep. school fits under the tax cap, what we think is happening is they're trying to do this yep. so that the school become their own taxing authority yeah. which will With allow own, them to right. circumvent right. the tax. Uh, tax right tax override and you know to quote people they actually said that they don't want to change the tax cap right because there was initial discussion to put a ballot question on oh, the, on the ballot that. that said oh we're going to override the tax cap and and i quote i think it was gene martin it who said martin. no that'll bring out the wrong kind of voters meaning the independents moderate democrats and republicans who are like you know what we got to stick to a budget maybe you got to stick to a That's budget right. too yeah. right um 
I don't remember. I wasn't really paying attention. I know they flashed Ten. something that was a 10-minute thing. So I do want to throw in a couple things because we'll run out of time. And, you know, there's two weeks to election. Um, interesting enough, I saw on Tim Baines' Facebook page, Tim Baines is the Ward 3 alderman who chose not to run again. Um, he's a and nice I don't guy. really I like know. Him. I really liked him. Um, I don't know who he's referring to. It's just interesting. He says, it seems these days that politicians will literally do anything to get elected. The amount of shady dealings going on is unlike anything I've ever seen in our local politics. There are some that would let the city burn down if it saved their own election efforts. People should always come before politics. Sadly, that is not the case anymore. I just thought that was an interesting little quip for um, the two weeks before the election. Tim Baines is obviously seeing um, something not good. Well, talk about, okay, I don't know if we should bring this up, but I saw stuff on Facebook this weekend that like my jaw dropped where Bill Barry. Oh, I can tell is, you all about that. He, he's, he's, he's a foot. Okay. So I'm just going to say what I think I believe I understand about what it is, is he's some kind of football coach at some school and he took his football team and made them knock on doors for him all weekend. Yeah. That's kind of over is, a um, thousand doors were knocked on. So yeah. I don't know. You got to get on the school board so that we can. <laughs> Well, Mobilize, you know, when you're the, talking the, the, about the, 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 you know, the ping youth Listen, to I was go out and knock on doors for a long for time. Me. So anybody who's marching <laughs> that wants to door knock with me this Saturday, the um, the store, the the bigger story on the Bill Berry thing because I Bill Berry is the Ward Ten um, current sitting alderman, and I live in Ward Ten, and I know Mr. Berry. You know, we say hello, we're cordial, all that good stuff. Um, as it should be. As it should be. I have no Because we're people. Right. Um, this weekend, though, he... It's crazy. Be we, kind to people. We don't know for sure if he's a coach. If he isn't a coach, the, the varsity coach refers to him as Coach Barry, which to me infers that he's a coach. Although he's not listed on the West High School coach list, which I... Just sends up another Spidey Sense weird thing on me. But, um, yeah, there's pictures on Facebook of Bill Berry with his thumbs up with West High uh, football players in jerseys they were in with uniform. Bill yeah. Berry for Alderman signs, which we'll come back to. And then they went out and Bill Berry posted uh, that, you know, yay, these are the greatest kids. They knocked on a thousand doors for me. Um, so yesterday, because tonight is an aldermanic meeting, so it'll be public knowledge by the time people are watching this on the, t the television instead of Facebook. Um, I filed a formal complaint against oh, Alderman did. Barry yesterday. Um, I, oh, believe, Tammy, great. <laughs> I believe he is violating the city charter and um, school committee or school board, um, school district policies. Um, the city charter says, honest government, ethical conduct, and the avoid avoidance of conflict of interest and public perception of ethical and honest conduct of public affairs are essential. I don't think using high school students that... Um, you're their coach. You have power over them. You are their, you know. Also, how like, is this not a personnel privacy? It is. Like uh, all and then um, in uh, the um, school. Do we have the permission of each of those parents? I don't know. In the, in the photo on a political in, candidate. In Perfect. the Manchester School District policy um, under Community 102 Public Information, under no circumstances shall students be used for the purpose of distributing any materials that could be considered political or special interest, wow. including school budget information. No school office, political group, parents group, or students shall be allowed to distribute to students or have posted in the schools any information that could be considered political or of special interest no information that should could be considered political or of special interest may be distributed on the school premises at any time the pictures were taken on west high school football field um this is just bad so it'll be interesting to watch the aldermanic meeting tonight um on this same tv station um to see what the aldermen do because um i requested that Alderman Barry be sent to the conduct committee. Oh wow! And that this be investigated further and a so stop so so let me guess. I'm going to go out on a limb I'm here and be like, oh, nothing's going to happen. I don't know. <laughs> well, I doubt anything will happen yeah. before the election. Yeah. Um, I which, mean, do these code of conduct things ever? Oh, they never result in anything. Thing. Nobody's I mean, ever wrong. Because we know there was that huge issue with the... Norm Gamache voted on a... Bud, on yeah, a, yeah, like the conflict of interest. Every time. You know, with, um, with contracts and yep. family members and yeah. all of that. But you're not. You're supposed to recuse yourself. And yeah, and they don't. Not, um, so we had a problem with him. We had a problem with Ron Ludwig. Before, when he was alderman, he voted on... Uh, contracts that benefited his wife um there's been other issues i mean i guess the, the the heart of the issue is maybe it's time for some fresh cute faces like yours Thanks. <laughs> uh, sorry not to objectify <laughs> but but I'll just to it. get maybe you know some fresh voices some fresh right. ideas in there and really you know 
I mean, face it. Some of these people have been around way too long, well, and, and they're abusing their. If they their are. Authority. I think that's what happened is people get very comfortable with what they think they sh- can, can do it. versus what they should be doing, and, or what they're allowed to do. Um, and I'm like, you know, rules, everyone so likes to, have to wag their applied. fingers at yeah. me at all right. kinds of stuff. So I'm like, you know what? You're not above the law either, no. sir. Yeah. No. It's really frustrating, too, when people say, we have all these issues and they need to be resolved. And it's like, how long have you had your seat right. in the place where the issues well, can be resolved? Has, I have, how long? I will say that. As the tax cap person, you know, uh, people moan and complain about the tax cap and how it constrains us, which, by the way, in the last... Thank you God know, it constrains in us. The last, what would they get in the last four it? years, the school budget's <laughs> gone up 8.3% million dollars when our de- our our student population is continues to decline we've gone down since to since 2006 we've lost you know 3,000 some odd students we're not we're 8. spending 3 million dollars more plus we have 46 students. million dollars in uh capital improvement right. projects and when, honestly and when people talk about the tax cap and they think that's the fault i i challenge them to say when was the last time there was a republican controlled aldermanic or school committee because it's been decades in Manchester since the Democrats have not been in control of that board. So when you, you're mad about things not getting done, don't point at the Republicans because we're not in charge. Point at the ones who've been in charge and they're the ones flubbing things up. Yep. Just saying. No, and it's <laughs> and I think to your point, Brittany, is a really valid one, right? So these people things so everyone walks around i we see it on the presidential level too right so everyone's like everything's wrong everything's bad and i'm like but how long it you been been doing it for 20 years so really on the one hand you're saying you can't do your job these people right Right. and then they're like but vote for us because suddenly magically next time next time i'm gonna make it better yeah and it's like i don't trust you i don't believe you and you have a track record that says the opposite and you have to remember they think they're electable because they like to scare people and i think one of the things i like about you and i think what we all represent is sort of hope optimism there are solutions to these problems let's think outside the box let's like make it about the children not about your teachers contracts or you know like whatever because i mean honestly those people aren't suffering the contracts are quite generous people are doing okay yeah, they're not they're your not pensions starving. are great you know so. i don't will. i don't know anyone else that has the guarantee that their their compensation is always going to change right now whether do i think that the contract's fair or not like i've but honestly nobody, not dug deep and nobody deep enough. goes into no work one every day knowing that, that next year you're going to get a three and i understand that with, without the contract in the public system if that's the way that our public system works and we have to have that foundation of a contract let's get that foundation that's of right. a contract and move forward right and get back to doing things for the kids I think that's it. That's it. Wow. So two weeks from today, November 5th, remember, remember, the 5th of November. November. <laughs> um, b- please make sure you get out and vote. Um, and I'm going to make a shameless plug. Vote for Victoria Sullivan for mayor. I think the city desperately needs um, some change at City Hall. Um, and I think Victoria can do it. I think she's actually got a different perspective on things than um, the wife of a North End attorney does. I like what you okay. said. And she she's... I mean, you've seen people come back and say, hey, we're willing to forgive your past voting record because we know that you've you've, you've grown learned. and changed like a, yep. like a person that does you when learn. you're presented you're with options and you move forward. That's right. And make sure you get out there and vote for Brittany LeClaire Ping in Ward 11, uh, Ray Heber, John Avard in Ward 10. Uh, shameless plugs for our wards. What's the what's the school charter commission? Carla Garrick, vote for me. I'm on the, the right-hand column, second from the bottom. Yep. And go to libertyballot.com if you want more information on really good candidates to vote it's a good, for. It's a good cheat sheet to take into the polling booth with you. Absolutely. That's all we got for this week. Go to the farmer's market on Thursday. That's still happening. Um, enjoy the weather. It's beautiful out there. Even though the leaves are a little bit t- little bit past, still damn beautiful it's here in New Hampshire. It's still pretty, pretty, pretty. That's all we got. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.